horses wore bobbing black plumes. The coach was fresh painted in black. Each of the lords of Stormhold was dressed in mourning. In the case of Primus, this took the shape of a long black monkish robe. Tertius was dressed in the sober costume of a merchant in mourning, while Septimus wore a black doublet and hose, a black hat with a black feather in it, and looked for all the world like a foppish assassin from a minor Elizabethan historical play. Lords of Stormhold eyed each other, one cautious, one wary, one blank. They said nothing. Had alliances been possible, Tertius might have sided with Primus against Septimus. There were no alliances that could be made. The carriage clattered and shook. Once it stopped for each of the three lords to relieve himself, and it clattered on down the hilly road. Together, the three lords of Stormhold had placed their father's remains in the Hall of Ancestors. Their dead brothers had watched them from the doors of the hall, but had said nothing. Toward evening, the coachman called out, Not away! He reined his team outside a tumble down inn built against what resembled the ruins of a giant's cottage. The three lords of Stormhold got out of the coach and stretched their cramped legs. Faces peered at them through the bottle glass windows of the inn. The innkeeper, who was a choleric gnome of poor disposition, looked out of the door. We'll need beds aired and a pot of mutton stew on the fire, he called. How many beds to be aired? asked Letitia, the chambermaid, from the stairwell. Three said the gnome. I'll wager they'll have their coachman sleep with the horses. Three indeed, whispered Tilly the pot girl to Lacey the ostler, when anyone could see a full seven of those fine gentlemen standing in the road. But when the lords of Stormhold entered, there were but three of them, and they announced that their coachman would sleep in the stables. Dinner was mutton stew, and bread loaves so hot and fresh they exhaled steam as they were cracked open. And each of the lords took an unopened bottle of the finest Barragundian wine, for none of the lords would share a bottle with his fellows, nor even permit the wine to be poured from the bottle into a goblet. This scandalized the gnome, who was of the opinion, not, however, uttered in the hearing of his guests, that the wine should be permitted to breathe. Their coachman ate his bowl of steel, drank two pots of ale, and went to sleep in the stables. The three brothers went to their respective rooms, and barred the doors. Tertius had slipped a silver coin to Letitia the chambermaid, which he brought him the warming pan for his bed. So he was not surprised at all when, shortly before midnight, there came a tap tapping on his door. She wore a one piece white chemise and curtsied to him as he opened.